Good morning. A great teacher who happens to be sitting in the audience today once told me there's two strong ways to start a speech. The first is with a joke to try and lighten the atmosphere. And the second is with a quote to try and add some authority to the words that you're about to bring to the table. And since I'm not that funny, <laughs> I decide to go with the quote. 1 Corinthians 13.11 says, When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I reasoned like a child. I thought like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. My name is William Walsh, and I'm here to talk about redefining what matters. Now, it's inevitable that as we get older, how we see the world and our place in it changes. See, the things that matter at age 5, 11, 18, and 30 change over time. At the age of 5, life is cartoons, t-ball, and ice cream. But by the time you hit 30, that five-year-old might be what matters. Redefining what matters is most often the result of personal experience, culture, relationships, and everything else that happens. In the end, it is time and circumstances coming together to form the perspective through which we view the world. Now, when I was younger, education was not a priority at least not as high a priority as it should have been. And that's because my priorities were actually unbalanced. Academics weren't nearly as challenging as navigating the social landscape. So I put just enough effort to get decent grades to keep my parents off my back. But the lens to which I see the world today has placed a much higher value on education. In the end, how we respond to the world Education has a big part to do with that. However, when we move forward, we have to remember we came from somewhere. And education helps us understand that. So I was looking for something that was going to help me understand both where I came from and where I was going. You see, that same lens through which I see the world today has been heavily influenced by the transformative power of education, both in myself and those around me. I was surrounded by men who went to school not because they had to, but rather because they recognized the opportunity that afforded them beyond these circumstances. And in order to get to where I wanted to be, I first had to understand who I was and who I wanted to become. Now, somewhere on my journey of self-discovery, I heard another quote, and this one had a profound effect on me. And I apologize to the author because I don't know who they were. But what they said was, the meaning of life is finding your gift, but your purpose is giving it away. Now, when I was younger, the depth of that would have been lost on me, as would the Bible verse from earlier, because things like that just didn't matter. I would have heard both and just moved on without a second thought. But again, on that journey of self-discovery, I took a course called Systematic Theology, easily the most difficult class I've ever taken, supported by the most difficult text I've ever read. But in the end, systematic theology teaches us that in order to know what you believe in, you must first know what you don't believe in. And redefining what matters works in much the same way. You first have to redefine what no longer matters. And that's part of the challenge we all face, because we all have pieces of our lives that aren't helping us get to where we want to be. Some of us don't even know where that is, much less how to get there. But the one thing that we can all do is redefine the important pieces, get rid of the unimportant, and find that passion that brings purpose to our lives. And that is the goal of all our speakers today. They have all found a way to redefine what matters to them. Thank you.